In today's video, we are going to take a look at what a short squeeze is and the different phases of a short squeeze. Hello and welcome. My name is Peter B and I welcome you here at My First Million, where we are achieving our financial goals together. So this is another part of our video series about shorting the stock market or a specific stock. So whether you're shorting a stock or you're long a stock that is heavily shorted, you want to be aware of short squeezes and you want to make sure that you understand short squeezes can happen, especially when you're shorting a stock. You should be aware of this possibility and therefore also evaluate whether or not the stock that you're shorting has the potential of going into a short squeeze. Because if it does, it can be financially very damaging for you if you're shorting a stock. So what is a short squeeze? Let's take a look at the definition here. A short squeeze usually can happen at stocks that have either very low liquidity or that are heavily shorted compared to the li liquidity. And as you can see here from the definition, it's a situation where the stock prices uh, can rise very suddenly in an extent that investors who have sold the stock short are forced to buy back the stock with a loss and therefore further push the stock price up. So as we have seen in previous videos, if you're going short the stock, you're betting that the stock price will be falling. However, if the stock price in, is rising, so against your hypothesis of a falling stock market, you want, might want to limit your short losses by buying back the shares at a higher price with a loss. And a short squeeze usually happens if those investors who are shorting a stock are forced to buy back the stock at a higher price. This is usually the stock broker who is telling you, you cannot go over a certain level of short risk, otherwise you're forced to buy back the short position at a significant loss. So if a stock price suddenly gets up significantly, this means all the people shorting a stock, they're even forced to buy back the stock and therefore pushing the, the stock price much higher. And so there could be an infinity loop. Every short seller buying back the stock is forcing the next short seller to also buy back the, the stock and so on. So let's take a look at two examples where such a short squeeze happened. These are probably the two most famous examples from the recent years. So the first example is Volkswagen in 2008. So the German automobile manufacturer at, in 2008, you see at the beginning of the graph here, there was nearly no activity, but then there was suddenly a lot of volumes coming in. And what happened there? Porsche holding, who at that time wasn't merged with uh, Volkswagen yet, wanted to take over Volkswagen. Therefore, they buy more and more stocks in the open market. So you can see here the volumes in at the middle of September uh, increased significantly. So Porsche was sell buying a lot of outstanding stocks from Volkswagen. So this was not a coordinated takeover, it was more like a hostile takeover, as this was not coordinated with the management of Volkswagen. So just for Porsche bought up more and more shares. But what will usually happen if you buy up more and more shares with huge volumes, Usually everyone who is willing to sell you the stock, they will sell you the stock. Maybe at a higher price and a higher price. But at one point, there's nobody left out there who want to sell you the stock. So you can see here, the issue here under the, under the graph is mentioning there's not enough available shares anymore. Porsche basically bought all the outstanding shares of, of Volkswagen. So, and also in Volkswagen, there were people shorting the stock because you can see here there was a spike up and people were thinking that Volkswagen is now overvalued. So those short sellers were betting that the stock price will fall again. However, at one point, Porsche bought so many Volkswagen shares 
that were no outstanding shares anymore. So everyone who wanted to buy an additional share only could do so if they found a seller who is willing to sell. So the prices went up significantly pretty fast because no one was willing at one point to sell their Volkswagen shares anymore. As a result, within one or two days, all the short sellers were forced to buy back their shares and therefore significantly pushing their share, the Volkswagen shares up even further. So this led to huge financial losses um, from many of the short sellers. But what you can also see, after the short squeeze, often the short, often the stock price will fall again. So let's take a look at another example, a more recent one, and therefore especially for the younger investors, maybe more well known is the one of GameStop. So GameStop's short squeeze happened at the beginning of 2021. And what happened here is there was a very excessive short interest. So you can see throughout the years until around the middle of, of 2022, the stock price of GameStop was falling dramatically, reaching its low in summer of 2022. So at that time, the future of GameStop was highly in doubt because the market they were in, it was shrinking and especially the new PlayStation and Xbox. At that time, it wasn't sure yet whether or not they still will have a disc slump because many games and the most part of the revenue that GameStop is, man is generating from was from games sold on discs. So because there was significant risk, a very huge proportion of short sellers were shorting this stock here. And, but then a few factors, a few events happened starting at the beginning of summer 2022. First, the new versions of PlayStation and Xbox were released and they had a disc slot. So this immediate threat was overcome. Then also, there was an activist investor starting to buy a significant portion of the stock. So this investor, I believe, took over 10% um, of the stock. But even before that, GameStop realized that they have enough cash on hand. So they bought back a significant amount of their shares outstanding. If I remember correctly, it was probably close to 50% of the stocks that they were bought buying back. So these three factors, buying back shares, getting an investor on board and having a brighter future because of the new releases, the new version of PlayStation and Xbox being compatible with GameStop's business model, gave the stock a boost. So you can see starting from the summer of 2020, the stock started to rise. But still, throughout the time, the stock kept a very high percentage in short interests. And then at one point though, when the stock started to continue to climb, stock brokers started to be aware of the risks of a short squeeze and therefore made it very unattractive to short the stock and started to ask short sellers to purchase back their stocks. And then this very quickly, lead into a frenzy of buying back the stock from short sellers. And this was even pushed more from Wall Street bets as many people, especially like small investors, saw that there's a potential short squeeze happening. So not only the short sellers were purchasing the stocks, but also there were more and more small, smaller investors who were buying long position of GameStop due to the potential short squeeze. So you can see here, the short squeeze happened very quickly, also within days or at most weeks. Then there was a drop again, similar like what we have seen in with Volkswagen, and then it was an increase again, and then over time, the stock is just slowly decreasing again and coming back to its fair value. So how does a typical short squeeze happen. I try to list down the f different phases of a short squeeze 
And if you go back to the to the graphs of Volkswagen and GameStop, you will see that those situations happened. So the first, usually what's happened is there are too many short sellers, especially compared to the number of available shares. This leads to an undervaluation of, of the stock. Probably this, they're pushing the stock price down so much that value investors might think now that the stock is a potential buy. Then the stock price started to rise. Often this happens due to a trigger event. For instance, at Volkswagen, this was Porsche starting to purchase stocks from Volkswagen. And at GameStop, it was the news about um, PlayStation and Xbox, as well as the additional investor coming in. So with this trigger events, more and more people want to buy the stock. And then the, this means the stock price is rising further. So as the stock price is rising, the first short sellers are getting forced to close their short positions. How they close the position? By purchasing the, the stock back. So they're buying the stock. So this means if they're buying the stock, the stock price is getting pushed even higher. And this means more short sellers are getting forced to close their short positions and buy back the stock. And then in the end, number six, all the short sellers are forced to close their short positions. And as we have seen in the two charts before, this can happen very quickly, sometimes just within days. And then in the end, usually what happens, because of the short squeeze, the stock is clearly overvalued and there's simply no buyer anymore. Because there's no short seller anymore who is risking his money in the stock anymore. And on the other side, the value investors don't really want to purchase this stock anymore because maybe now it's overvalued. So the stock price is coming back down again as it might be overvalued at this point. So what does this mean for us investors? If you are only investing into long positions, it doesn't really huge effect to you. Maybe you're lucky that you're investing into a stock that is going through a short squeeze and you can take some profits there. Or, but of course, if it's overly shorted the stock, maybe you will see a longer time where the stock price is suppressed, which in worst case could lead that the company which is shorted is not trusted anymore and therefore runs into bankruptcy. But as a long investor, usually you will take a look at the company's valuation and therefore you will make the investment decisions based on that. So a short squeeze really shouldn't influence that much as the valuation of the company shouldn't be significantly affected because of a potential short squeeze or because the stock has been shorted. However, if you're shorting a stock, if you're not investing into a stock, if you're trying to make gains of a falling stock price, always take a look how heavily is the stock shorted. And if, it's has, if it has a high short interest compared to the numbers of shares outstanding, be very careful and make sure that your investment thesis really comes true. Otherwise, you're risking a lot of money. Not just the money that you invested into the short position, but as we have seen in previous videos, your risks could be literally unlimited. What are your experiences of a short squeeze? Please share with us in the comments below. Thanks a lot for joining me today. I look forward to seeing you in the next video and especially I look forward to seeing you winning financially.